Mary O'Reilly, um, Peace and Security Consultant and a Senior Advisor at Peace, at Peace is Loud. You're very welcome to the Africa Center for Strategic Studies. Thank you. Now, there's growing evidence uh, that women's inclusion in peace processes um, leads to more stability, greater stability. Uh, what are the most striking elements of your research? Sure. So it's very interesting time right now in the field of peace and security in this regard. As you know, for a long time, scholars have been looking at different dimensions of identity as drivers of conflict. So, for example, how does tribal identity affect uh, conflict roots causes or how does economic inequality affect conflict and how can we address these elements to build peace? What we're finding now more and more in a very diverse array of scholarly research is that there are actually very strong correlations between gender equality and peace and security. So, for example, we have pathbreaking research coming out of Texas A&M University, uh, Valerie Hudson and her colleagues. They have actually found that gender equality is a stronger predictor of peace than a country's GDP, its uh, level of democracy or its uh, type of religion, for example. So some of these elements that, you know, different uh, thinkers in the path have pointed to as key uh, pillars of peace in society. Actually, what we're finding now is gender equality is really a very significant um, correlate of peace. And similarly, inequality, gender inequality can actually drive conflict. There are some more fabulous findings in this regard particularly in relation to women's participation in public life. So, for example, we have a lot of studies now that show as the proportion of women in parliament increases, a state is less likely to use force in its relations with other nations. It's less likely to have human rights abuses against its own people. And it's also less likely uh, to have civil war internally. So all of these uh, traditional markers of insecurity war with your neighbors, standing in the international community, the way a uh, state treats its population, all of those improve as gender equality in society rises. Right, that's very, that's fascinating. Uh, which brings me to the next uh, uh, question. Uh, you say in your, in your work that um, uh, women, women police officers um, uh, uh, add a lot of value um, in any in any society, and you say in, especially in conservative societies. Uh, can you expand on this? Sure. So this is an area where we have a little bit less quantitative data, as we do in terms of gender equality and peace writ large. But the a small number of studies that are out there are really pointing in this direction. So, for example, there is a study from the United States that shows that women in police forces in the U.S. are far less likely to use excessive force in their encounters with civilians. And they're also much more likely to de-escalate interpersonal conflicts without resorting to violence. In conservative cultures, there's a whole other dimension to this picture. Because as you know, it can be very difficult, for example, for male police officers to search women uh, who are part of the civilian population. And so actually what we've seen in Pakistan, for example, is that violent Islamist extremists have used women with full body cover uh, as a means of transporting, for example, a, a, a abductees. And what they're banking on is that when they reach a security checkpoint, there won't be a woman among the police force to conduct a security check on the covered woman. Uh, in this particular instance, however, um, there was one, one police woman on site who happened to search the person and the abductee was found. That's just one example. Let me give you another. In Nigeria, for example, the extremist group Boko Haram abducted almost 300 girls from the Chibok uh, village, as you know, and then went on to use many of them as suicide bombers. And that was something that was unexpected. Often we don't think of women in relation to perpetrating that kind of violence. But again, the extremist group was really exploiting the lack of women in the security forces, knowing that these girls were much less likely to get searched for explosives, but also really exploiting the shock value of that, that people who are in security forces aren't necessarily expecting the threat to come from a woman. So there's a mix here of the physical inclusion of women who can really uh, 
have conversations with women in the community, get different perspectives and get different information on what security threats are out there. There's the uh, more concrete element of, you know, performing a security check on a woman. But then there's also just having a gender perspective that both men and women in the security forces need to have to know that threats can come from a lot of different places. And we need information from men and women uh, in order to get a fuller picture of the security environment around us. Right. Now, um, uh, over to P uh, looking at peace agreements. Mm. And uh, again, this is an area um, you know, that you've done a lot of research. Uh, and uh, you've made the argument that the inclusion of women in peace negotiations uh, leads to more sustainable agreements. Uh, are you able to uh, give you know some Certainly. examples? Certainly. So I'm very excited to say that you know since I've been working on this for a few years, there's actually a whole new fantastic article out uh, by another scholar in the International Interactions Journal, uh, which I'm delighted to push because this again is yet another study showing the same thing that when women are included meaningfully in peace negotiations, the peace that results is more durable. And what these authors are finding is that it's because women in the, in the negotiations, they interact with women in civil society groups in order to inform the provisions of the peace agreement. When women participate, the provisions of the peace agreement are far more likely to address economic issues, social issues, often the kind of things that didn't come up in traditional peace processes. So traditionally, if you think about how a peace negotiation went, you see male belligerents behind closed doors hammering out an agreement over who's going to get the territory, who's going to get access to the resources, who's going to hold power. And what we see again and again is that when women uh, are able to really participate meaningfully uh, in these processes, they bring different perspectives. They're coming from a different place more often than not, and they have different priorities for peace. So, for example, in Northern Ireland, when women participated in the peace process there, they brought issues to the agenda that other uh, parties were not bringing, and they included uh, integrated education. Right now, you know, the, when they were at the peace table, the children in Northern Ireland were learning to hate each other in schools. They had divided education. And the women who came to the peace process said, this is driving conflict in our society. This needs to be addressed in this peace negotiation. So they put that issue on the agenda that otherwise would not have been there. And many other issues, for example, the release of political prisoners, many issues to do with reconciliation. And all of these elements wouldn't have been addressed if they hadn't been there. But because they were there, they got provisions into the peace agreement that dealt with these issues that really touch on the deeper root causes of conflict and begin to build pathways to peace. So it's not an either or. I think that we obviously, this is about women working alongside men. Um, and there's probably a lot more that unites us than divides us in all of this. But what we see time and again is, you know, diversity helps to create a better peace agreement and the agreement is more likely to last as a result. No, fantastic. Fantastic. That's an excellent place to stop. And uh, we'll obviously continue this conversation. And uh, thank you very, very much for coming to the Africa Center. Thanks. Thanks.